One evening, uh, was during the Masters, I think it was like Friday, maybe afternoon, late, we were, uh, Dad came down to my, our home every evening for 12 years and had dinner. And uh, he always was dressed up. He always cleaned up and dressed up. And uh, we were watching the Masters. And uh, he's uh, sitting there, and Dad looked over at me, and he never bragged about his career or his game. But he looked over at me, and he said, you know what, Jack? And I said, what, Pop? He said, you know, there was a time during my career when I walked up on the first tee, and I knew there was no one in the world that could beat me. And not too many people can say that, I don't think. <laughs> and um, I'd like just to quote uh, his tournament wins from uh, the USGA in 1949 and 1950, and this will be the end. In 1941, he won the Capital City Open, the Dapper Dan Open, the Decatur Open, the Greensboro Open, the Masters Tournament, and he got the first green jacket ever then, the National Celebrities Open, the PGA Championship, the Phoenix Open, the Texas Open, the Washington Star Open, the West Virginia Open, the West Virginia PGA, the Western Open, he was a PGA money leader. He was a PGA player of the year. He was a Varden Trophy winner. And he was on the U.S. Ryder Cup team. That was a good year. <laughs> yeah. And you know, in 1948, uh, uh, during the Champions Dinner, uh, you know, they have cocktails first for about an hour before they sit down to dinner. And they discuss last year's tournament and what they would like to see change, if anything, and all. And Hogan said, you know, then, you got, when you won the Masters, you got a little mahogany plaque about this tall and had a little sterling silver plate on it. And there was a little gold chevron they put on there when you won it, and it says champion in the year, and that's it. And then you got a gold medal, which they always gave, and, of course, your money. And Hogan said, you know, next year, why don't we give them something special as well? Why don't we give them one of the members' jackets? And that was the beginning of the green jacket. And so Dad got the first one, and about four years later, his was stolen out of his locker. And they gave him Bobby Jones' jacket to wear later on after that when Jones passed away. And Jones was not the size of Dad. And Dad said the sleeves came up, about, up to here. <laughs> so finally, they made him a new jacket. All right, and last but not least, uh, 1950, uh, his year, he won the Bing Crosby Pro-Am, the Canada Cup, Colonial National Invitational, the Greensboro Open, the Inverness Four Ball, the Los Angeles Open, the Miami Beach Open, the Miami Open, the North and South Open at Pinehurst Number no. Two, the Quarter Century Open, the Reading Open, Texas Open, West Virginia Open, Western Open. He was PJ Money Leader and Varden Trophy, and that was that year. So, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> anyway. Dad won the most, and he won them the longest. He won f in five decades. He won tournaments. And as J.C. and I were talking a few minutes ago, Dad's uh, game didn't start to get little little off until he was about 67 years of age. So, you know, <laughs> that's all. I thank you very much. Actually, I could just sit down and listen to that all night. I'll tell you what. Um, it, when I found out I was coming here, that really was a highlight of it. I, I couldn't wait to get here to a place that's so synonymous with one of the great names in the history of the game. Um, so thank you, Jackie. That was special. We move on. More inductees to come, including a native of Lynchburg and a resident of Richmond and Jupiter, Florida. Vinnie Giles had an unmatched amateur career. He is the only player to ever win the U.S. Amateur, that was in 1972, the British Amateur in 1975, and the U.S. Senior Amateur in 2009. That's quite a span, as a matter of fact. A three-time All-American at the University of Georgia, he was a 1976 inductee into the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame. Good shorts, too. He won a record seven Virginia State Golf Association amateurs, three Virginia Opens, and two VSGA senior amateurs. Vinnie Giles played on four Walker Cup teams and captained the 1993 winning U.S. side. Please welcome Vinnie Giles to the podium.
The Virginia Golf Hall of Fame is proud to induct Vinnie Giles as a member of its inaugural class in recognition of many years of excellence and outstanding contributions to the game of golf in Virginia and beyond, presented on this 10th day of May, 2016. Vinnie Giles. Terry, thank you, and thanks to all of you for being here. I don't think we say enough how much we appreciate the support we're getting. Um, it was especially meaningful to me to see a couple of old, old special friends from Lynchburg and various other places that I did not expect to be here. Some of my closest friends, I said, I'm not going to guilt trip you into coming, so I'm not going to invite you. <laughs> so um, I also want to say a special thanks to the Omni Homestead, it's very hard, Bob, for me to say Omni Homestead, but I'll say it, uh, because I know how proud you are of it, and uh, I, I, I always knew it as the Cascades, period. Not the upper Cascades, not the lower, but the Cascades. And I first started coming up here as a young, young man. My wife, Key, came up here even earlier uh, with her grandmother when she was about six, and uh, my first experience at the Cascades Golf Course was my father told me I wasn't old enough to play in the men's tournament, but I could come up here and caddy. So I caddied for three years, and I was sharing with Curtis the other day, which he said he didn't know or didn't remember, that I caddied in the finals against his father uh, for a commander, Bob Wallace, who was down in, uh, I think he was in Oceana at the time. And I told Curtis, I said, your dad could have given this man two aside and somehow a guy beat him, beat Curtis's father. I never will, I guess it was a caddy. <laughs> but this place has a lot of very, very fond memories for me. And also thanks to the VSGA and Gib Palmer. Gib, I know how tirelessly you've worked on this and uh, we are most appreciative. It's a, it's a really a special honor to be a member of the first class and to be beside the Curtis Stranges and the Lanny Watkins, the Clyde Luthers, and obviously the Sam Sneeds and Chandler Harpers. Um, I looked at this thing and I said, you know, I didn't used to have to use notes. And I didn't have to use glasses to read the notes. <laughs> so I guess when you get to be this age, those things happen. Um, Chandler Harper, I did not know that well. I really knew him as much as anything because of all the work he did with Curtis. But I did have the chance to play with him several times. Uh, I think it was alluded to by Terry. Um, I marveled at his short game. We played an exhibition match one time at his club, Badawi, in Portsmouth. And he was willing to take the time to take me aside afterwards. I mean, after people had gone home and show me some little shots. And I mean, it took me about 30 seconds to incorporate them into my game. And for a long time it worked, but uh, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh, Sam Sneed, I absolutely adore. Jack Vardaman, my good friend, spent a lot of time with him. And I got to play probably 30, 40, 50 rounds with Sam way late in his life. And I still think when you're talking about greats, and I know you talk about Nicholas and you talk about Woods. Longevity-wise, the greatest player in the game is Sam Snead. Yes. And I'm not so sure he wasn't as, as, as fine a player as the game has ever had when you look at all aspects. He was pretty, pretty phenomenal. As I say, I had a chance to play with him. And the other thing I loved about Sam was how competitive he was. I mean, it didn't matter what it was. And then, boy, if there was a dollar involved, whew, he was going to figure out a way to grind it out of you. I, I, you mentioned uh, earlier that Sam was the oldest player at 61 to qualify for the uh, last two rounds of the U.S. Open. I happened to play in that Open at Oakmont in 1973. And we had a practice round, which happened to be Lanny Watkins and Vinnie Giles against Sam Sneed and Lionel Train Abair. First thing I remember is we started on the first hole and we had the normal fives or ten dollar plays, which was way over my limit. It wasn't nearly enough for Lanny, it hardly had got his interest up. And uh, 
Lionel shanked it out of the middle of the first fairway over in the road, and that sort of started Sam looking at Lionel like something was wrong with him. And long story short, Lanny carried me around for 17 holes, and we were absolutely just killing them. We were up bet after bet, and Sam would quit pressing on the team because he didn't think Lionel was any good all of a sudden. <laughs> and we get to the 18th tee, and Sam takes X number of bets with Lanny individually and X number with me individually, and he sidles in about a 30-footer on the last hole for a birdie. And I had gone from up five or six bets to down one. <laughs> Lanny had probably gone from up 15 to only up about nine, but we'd still kill them on the team. So Sam hits me before I could get to the fringe of the 18th green. He got his hand out for the five dollars, the one, the one bet. Of course, Lionel stiffed me, so I came, I, I came out uh, five dollars to the bad uh, after that day. But he was, I mean, Sam was something, and I mean, way, way late in life. Jack and I had a game with him one time, same situation. And we got to 12, and Sam was having a bad day, and, and Jack Barberman was beating him pretty badly. And, and I said, well, Sam, you never, Sam was probably 80 at the time. And he, we were giving him shots, and there wasn't enough shots, et cetera. And, and he says, uh, I said, well, Sam, everybody has a day like this every day. Yeah, but you know what really makes me mad? I'm going to lose 60 bucks. If he'd won five, he'd have been happy. But when I think of Sam, I think of Sam Snead with a golf club was like Fred Astaire with Ginger Rogers. It was grace, it was fluidity, it was athleticism. It was, I don't think anybody's ever duplicated that, the beauty of that golf swing. Lanny Watkins, my long, long time friend and fellow competitor in the 60s and early 70s. It's kind of funny to say, but Lanny as a golfer is sort of my role model, even though he's a heck of a lot younger than I am. Lanny played fast. He played decisively, but his style, his attitude, and his desire to win took a back seat to nobody. Uh, players today, eh, they, they just soon finish top 10, 12 times and make three million. Lanny would say, you know, if I can't win, I don't really care. And he told me one time, he said, I'll never, never probably ever know how much money I left on the table because with three, four, five holes to go, I knew I couldn't win, so I really kind of lost interest. But uh, I can only say, I played, I'll tell you one quick story. Lanny and I played, I think he was 16, I think it was 1966, in the quarterfinals of Virginia State Amateur. And I had been playing some pretty good golf that year and was, you know, felt like I knew what I was doing. I'm playing this kid and he's just hitting good shot after good shot. And fortunately, I finally beat him uh, on the 16th hole and we were walking back up. There used to be a bridle path down by 16, right by the creek. And, and I was walking behind him and he was kind of shaking his head and I came up, sort of put my arm around him. I said, you okay? He said, yeah, but you, I, I played, I played great, and you just beat the hell out of me. And that's what, to me, defined Lanny Watkins. Nobody does this to Lanny Watkins, and few did. Curtis Strange, fortunately for me, I didn't have to play a whole lot against Curtis. He was just younger enough, uh, enough younger than I that... Uh, that we never, I don't think we ever had a match, Curtis, that we actually played head to head. I know uh, when Curtis was at, at Wake and, and uh, his friend Jay Haas, uh, Vernon Spratley and I did a little under the, Terry was talking earlier about the, what basketball coaches are doing these days. We did a little undercover work with Curtis and Jay, tried very hard to recruit uh, Curtis, but Mark McCormick uh, unfortunately beat us uh, to him. Um, but he's had a fabulous, fabulous career, back-to-back -back opens, um, just, well, a, a true Hall of Fame career, and, and deservedly so as part of that Hall of Fame, and now Fox Television on the course man. But most critically, Curtis is a real credit to himself, to his family, and to the game. Clyde Luther. Clyde, I'm going to pick on you a little bit. When Clyde first started out in the rules business, we used to think he was a Gestapo. <laughs> Clyde was that guy that we felt like was hiding behind that tree waiting for my ball to move. 
and he would put a little gotcha on you. But I will tell you that he learned the rules better than probably anybody. He learned the relationship with the players, and he became not only a good, good friend, but I thought uh, one, of the, one of the really great officials that we had in the game. I, in fact, I've said, and I ran into to Claire and Lou Blakey in the, in the lobby earlier, I think Virginia maybe had the two best officials at USG, Vince and Clyde and, and Lou. Uh, furthermore, his long, long dedication to the Virginia State Golf Association in every capacity, later as president and as a great friend, Clyde, what a wonderful honor and you're so well deserving of it. Very briefly, as you all know, the game of golf has been near and dear to my heart for <laughs> way longer than I'd like to remember. Um, I started playing it almost 70 years ago and have, have loved every minute of it. I owe a lot to the game. My dear wife, Key, has put up with a lot of stuff from the game. I'm thinking of another word, but I won't use it. Um, <laughs> But it, you know, I mean, it ended up being my vocation, my avocation, uh, a tremendous part of our lives. And all I can say is it's the finest game in the world. I think, uh, as Terry mentioned earlier, referring back to how young guys are looking at Sam Snead, they're walking down the hall trying to swing a golf club like Sam Snead, that people used to stop and watch Sam Snead practice. Etc. I mean, it just Arnold Palmer. I mean, Curtis Lanny go on and on and on. How close they've been to Arnold Palmer because of the Palmer Scholarship, Wake Forest, etc. It it uh, it just reverberates on and on and on. Um, and there's really no message I have tonight other than to say to the VSGA as the as the keepers of the key um, and to all things golf in Virginia. I would really like to see us work harder and harder to develop the next crop of Lanny and Bobby Watkins and Curtis Stranges. Uh, it's the lifeblood of the game. It is really, really important that, that we, you know, that we keep that going. Um, Key and my family want to thank everybody involved for allowing me to be a part of the class of 2016. It's certainly, uh, a special privilege and one I will always cherish. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you all for making the effort to be here to support us. It, uh, you might not know it, but it means a lot to us. Best wishes to all and a good evening. Vinny, thank you. And, and Vinny started us down this path, so I'm just going to continue with a man up front. Clyde Luther of Burke, Virginia is generally acknowledged to be one of the world's leading authorities on the rules of golf. Go ahead. Yeah. He's educated many generations of players that the rules properly understood and applied are the golfer's friend not the enemy. In 2002, we won the prestigious Joe Dye Award presented by the USGA for years of meritorious service to the game of golf. How about this next picture? Yeah. Luther has served as a rules official for more than 120 USGA championships, three President's Cups, the Masters, and the PGA. He's also a past president of the VSGA and the Middle Atlantic Golf Association. Clyde Luther, please come up here and talk to the crowd and accept your award. The Virginia Golf Hall of Fame is proud to induct Clyde Luther as a member of its inaugural class in recognition of many years of excellence and outstanding contributions to the game of golf in Virginia and beyond, presented on this 10th day of May, 2016. Thank you, Thank you Terry. 
Well, uh, there's a lot of folks to thank, but the first one I want to thank is my wife of 62 years. And my entire family is here tonight, and I mean my entire family. I would like to have all of you please stand up, all of the Luther clan. Thank you, everybody. I was a United Airlines pilot for 33 and a half years, and I was doing both officiating golf tournaments and, and uh, flying airplanes, and I'd come in from a trip and I'd go out on a, on a uh, rules assignment, and my wife would put up with all of that. She did that for many years. But also, I'd like to thank Mr. Tom Meeks. Tom Meeks was the director, retired. He's now the retired director of rules and competition for the USGA. And he got me started in all of this uh, in 1982 when I was appointed to the US Junior Championship Committee. And then in 19, uh, well, let, let me back up just a little bit. And uh, Tom was, Tom was, uh, as I said, the retired director of rules and competition for the USGA. And I would also like to thank from the USGA, and in this room tonight, I think, is Jeff Hall. Jeff has been a great big help to me in the rules assignments. And uh, also, uh, and also uh, Mike Davis, the director of, executive director of the USGA, has helped me immensely. And also, I need to thank the VSGA, very much so, and to Gib Palmer, our past president and head of the uh, Hall of Fame uh, committee. And I also like to thank Jamie Conklin, our executive director of the VSGA, and all of the rest of the uh, VSGA staff that's here and all of the USGA staff that's here. I'm thankful to be inducted, very thankful to be inducted into this Hall of Fame with Curtis Strange, Lanny Watkins. And by the way, the first Open that Curtis won uh, was my first United States Open in 1988. And then I followed up by working 21 of them. A little more than he won, but he won two in a row there. <laughs> and I've also worked many, many VSGA tournaments that uh, Vinnie Giles has played in. I've worked many tournaments that Lanny Watkins has uh, played in, and uh, it's been a it's been a tremendous journey. And it all started back in 1976 when I was at Washington Golf and Country Club, uh, watching the uh, state amateur being played. And I noticed there was not much help being there. There was only, only rules of faces were nine people on the, uh, the board of directors. And half of them weren't there running the tournament. And uh, so shortly thereafter, I was assigned to a section chairman job on the VSGA. And then on to the board of directors where we started getting rules officials from around the state. We started with five or six when I su submitted the, to the board of directors uh, the plan to get from around the state. We now have about 70. <clears throat> and over the years, I've met and done some amazing things. Just a few are officiating over 150 national championships, of which I've worked 21 U.S. Opens, senior Opens, amateurs, junior amateurs, senior amateurs, women's opens, and uh, in addition to that, I've worked the Masters, the PGA, three President's Cups, and the Warburg Cups. I've worked all of those and several times. And uh, it's just been a tremendous, tremendous uh, assignment uh, that I've uh, tackled for so many years. And along the way, I've met some of the uh, top 
golfing talents on the uh, that have come along from the junior ranks in Tiger Woods. I've known Tiger very well since he's 14. Jordan Spieth since he was a teenager. Ricky Fowler, Matt Kuchar are just a few of the uh, youngsters that I've seen grow up and have associated with them during their play as junior golfers. And also I have been bestowed, been bestowed many honors during my journey. <clears throat> as Terry said, I've received the Joe Dye Award, which is the award for the number one uh, uh, individual uh, uh, person that uh, does volunteer work for the USGA. I got that in 2002. I've had the Ike Granger Award, which was given for 25 years of service. And then I <clears throat> have been awarded the Golf Coaches Association of America Hall of Fame, the Middle Atlantic Golf Association Hall of Fame. And uh, uh, so I've, I've had a great time and a great uh, experience, let's put it that way, along the way. I've also found that uh, two of the most rewarding gifts I have received are working with people and making a difference in both their personal and professional lives. <clears throat>